Hello and welcome to chapter 1 of the Bishop's Opening. We'll start this chapter with a game played by former world champion and world's number one Magnus Carlsen against a top Chinese grandmaster Wei Ji. So white plays e4, black plays e5, bishop c4, and here black plays knight to f6. So as we know, we want to keep our position flexible as white. That's why we play d3 here. It is worth noting that knight c3 is a move you'll find in several games. However, I don't like the fact that black can play knight takes e4 here. There are other moves too, such as knight c6, bishop b4, bishop c5. Um, black can probably play c6 too. Um, same line we'll see in a minute. In the main line, however, after knight c3, black can play knight takes e4. The problem is, if we play the main line here, we'll reach an endgame. It is a dry line as well. Now, if we go knight takes e4, black plays d5, he gets the piece back and he ends up with a powerful center. That's not a good idea for white. If we play bishop takes f7 check, King takes, knight takes e4, black plays d5, and black easily hides the king on g8, black keeps the bishop pair, and also that powerful center, not recommended for white, the engine already gives black a minus 0.8 advantage. So we're not going to play bishop takes f7, we're not going to play knight takes e4. If we have this position as white, we have to play queen h5, creating a checkmate threat on f7, attacking the pawn e5 too, so black plays knight e6, protecting f7, and also attacking the bishop on c4, queen takes e5 check, queen e7, we trade queens off, bishop takes, we are already in move 7, and we are looking at an endgame where it is fair to say black has already equalized. So we don't really want to play an endgame unless we have an advantage, and that's not the case. So after knight f6, we'll play d3 here. All right, so after d3, black has a couple of moves to consider. We usually end up playing an Italian game, or we'll end up playing a position we will study throughout the course. For instance, if he plays knight c6, we can play knight c3, knight a5. We've mentioned this in the intro. Now, if he plays bishop c5, well, we'll see some ideas after bishop c5 too. I don't want to spoil anything. Now, I want to focus on c6 by black, which is, by the way, the most popular system for black against the bishop's opening. And it makes sense, because after c6, black wants to play an early d5, uh, attacking our bishop on c4. All right, so after c6, we play knight to f3, and d5 is the main move here. However, there are two other moves to consider, and those are bishop b7 and d6. So we'll start off by analyzing bishop e7. Before doing so, let me say that d6 is the move that black played in the main game Carson against Weiji, a game which, by the way, you'll find in the PGN files. So we'll get to that later. Now let's see bishop e7, which is a tricky move. Now I'll explain why this arrow is there. Um, but after bishop e7, first thing we have to point out is that knight takes e5 doesn't work. We don't win a pawn here after knight takes e5, because black has queen a5 check, and we lose a piece. So we are not going to take on e5 yet. Um, I found a game where white played bishop b3 here, but moves aside, let me mention this concept. I think this is key to understand, because you'll find some games where white plays bishop b3 first, you'll, ha you'll find some games where white castles, what we have to focus on here is ideas. 
concepts. If we study this myth by myth, we are not going to learn much. If we study concepts, then we'll learn a lot. So, um, for instance, castling here is just fine. In fact, if we castle, now we create the threat of knight takes e5, because queen a5 check, well, queen a5 is no longer a check, actually, because our king is no longer there. So, if we castle, black has to protect the pawn e5, and now we'll see that bishop b3 is a move that happens sooner or later. We have to play bishop b3, because black, he'll try chasing our bishop with b5, a5, maybe knight e7, knight c5. Um, that happens a lot in the Italian or Spanish, where black goes, black comes after our bishop there, playing those moves, or knight c6, knight a5, as we saw before. So it is interesting for us to play bishop b3 so that we can play c3 and bishop c2. It is good to hide our bishop on c2, or at least to have a retreating square such as c2, or even playing a3 and a4, a3 or a4, I should say, in order to play bishop a2. So, um, bishop b3 is uh, an accurate move by white in this specific position, and coming back to ideas and concepts, we'll play c3, we'll make sure we hide our bishop on c2 in case black plays something like this, and the other key concept, or key maneuver we have to remember is rook to e1, not only supporting the pawn e4, but also freeing the f1 square for our knight, let's say he goes a5, I'll just play random moves for black just to show you the idea, we'll play knight f1, we'll transfer the knight to g3, now our knight is trans transferred to the king side, we are ready to attack, at some point we'll play d4 as well, it's usually a good idea for white to gain space and play d4, but before doing so, it is great to have most, if not all, of our pieces developed. So, notice that before playing d4, we transferred the knight to g3. Another key move for white is playing h3, a move that white plays all the time in the Italian or Spanish, because we stop pins like bishop g4, we stop moves like knight g4. On top of that, h3 allows knight to h2, queen f3, and then we've got extra attacking possibilities on the king side. I know I'm just going too far with uh, white's moves and black. In the meantime, black is playing nonsense, but I want to show some potential ideas because this is what can happen in our games. So after rook a8, all right, knight f5 is actually killer here because we get the bishop pair, we probably have some tactics already, we might even have some stuff like bishop h6, if black is not careful, here for instance queen g3 is great, however bishop h6 is even stronger, we attack the pawn g7 and if he takes, we've got queen g3 and queen g7 checkmate, so you can see how dangerous uh, that position is for black. Um, if black plays, let's say he plays better, or if he plays something else and we don't have knight f5 available, knight g4 is also a good idea for white because we can take with the pawn and still we've got a lot of attacking possibilities. So another maneuver I'd like to mention before we dive into main lines is that if you want to play knight f5 at some point, knight h4 is also a possibility. So it all depends on what black plays. But those are the ideas that, that are worth remembering. Okay, so as we can see, if black plays a quiet system like bishop e7 or d6, as we'll see, in the game played by Carson against Wei Ji. If black plays 
solid line, we can stick to the Italian repertoire, which is playing c3, bishop b3, knight d2, castles, rook e1, knight f1, knight g3. If we play that way, we are guaranteed to get a good position out of the opening. That is a solid system for white, and there's no way black can crack it. It's, that system worked for decades, if not, <laughs> yeah, years. So, yeah, you probably know what I'm trying to say. It's, it, it has worked every single time for white. So, let's see what happened in the games. After knight f3, bishop e7. Alright, so after bishop e7, in one of the games I found played by Grandmaster Tivyakov, white played bishop b3 first. Of course, we can castle just to make things easier. So, black castles as well. Um, I want to focus on the middle game, that's why I chose a game where white started with bishop b3. Notice that here, by the way, white played bishop b3, he hasn't castled yet, so if we take on e5, there's still queen a5, check. So here white plays c3. Now we create the threat of taking on e5, because queen a5 is no longer a check. So black plays queen c7, and here white plays queen to e2. So it feels like white is trying to stop the e5 somehow, but I should say that black can still play it. Um, if we want to stick to the standard plan, we can just castle, we can play knight bd2, rook e1, and we'll probably get a good position out of the opening. That's what I would probably do as white. Now we know Tifiakov is an expert on the lines he plays, he's a um, theoretician, when he plays e4 he knows his stuff, um, actually lost to him in an Italian game a few years ago, so I have to say his ideas are um, model ideas to follow. So after queen e2, as I was saying, it feels like white's trying to uh, stop d5. However, black can still play it, because if d5, uh, if we take, black can simply take, and now there's a lot of uh, potential for black on the e-file, especially if we take with the queen, there's bishop d6. The engine says uh, this is equal, but I don't really like playing with no development and with all of uh, this initiative for black. So what I would probably do is white in this position, if my opponent plays something like d5, I would still play with a solid foundation. I would follow the standard plan, which is castling knight d2, rook e1, knight f1. I can still play same way white plays in the Italian. So queen e2 is not necessarily a mistake. If I follow the standard plan, I feel the queen on e2 is doing okay. So um, now let's see what happened in the game because black didn't play d5. Black didn't want to play in a gambit mode. Instead, black played rook to e8, white castled, and now we'll be able to see uh, how to play this line as white. And that's the reason why I chose this game. Black plays h6. Fair enough, he wants to stop knight g5. So knight bd2. Black doesn't play d5. Even if he does, we can just uh, keep our pawns there. There's no need to take. That's what I'm trying to say. So if he plays d5, that's uh, no problem for us. We can just keep on playing rook e1, knight f1. So here, rook e1, d6, white plays knight to f1, and here black plays bishop e6. Notice that black has several ways of playing this. He can try a5, b5, he can play knight a6, he can play, he can 
imagine this position with black's queen on d8. So, a lot of ways black can play his position. Our position, on the other hand, it's easy. We know where our pieces are going, we know c3, d3, e4, we know the knight transfer, we know we'll play h3 at some point. So, you get the concept. As white, we know how to play. Black, on the other hand, has several ways of playing, and our system as white works all the time, regardless of what black plays. So, that's why, as I mentioned in the intro, that's why I like the bishop's opening, because we, uh, we'll get a position we like every single time. So, after bishop e6, here we get a concept that uh, arises a lot in the Italian, um, where bishops are facing each other. Now, depending on uh, your style or the specific position, you can choose to keep bishops on board or you can uh, go for a trade. Uh, I like swapping bishops off here because Black's rook is no longer on f8, meaning if he takes with the f pawn, well, first of all, his pawns are not great, and also the f file is not uh, open. I mean, it is, but there's no rook on f8 for black, so it gives us uh, an advantage as white. We can play h3, knight g3, we can still play natural moves. In fact, the engine recommends g4 for white here, which is quite aggressive. I believe... Well, it's hard not to agree with an engine, but since black doesn't have rook on f8, it gives us extra possibilities such as g4. So look at our position here. Solid kingside, a lot of attacking ideas. Uh, we might even play king g2, transfer the rook to g1 or h1, depending on what black plays. And the engine gives a plus 1.2 advantage for white, so pretty nice actually. Um, so, okay, let's say black plays. Let's see what the best move for black is. Queen f7, okay, maybe g4 here is too aggressive. But now we can play knight g3, knight h2, or some point we can play d4 as well if we want to keep on gaining space. You can see we're looking at a position where white has more space, a healthy pawn structure, and black is still there. He's got a solid position, but best he can get out of this is equality. So it is a nice advantage to have as white, where you've got the initiative and your opponent is waiting to see what happens. So um, those are the advantages I look for when I play systems like bishop c4. Solid advantage for white and basically little to no counterplay for black. So coming back to uh, bishops facing each other here, uh, we can take now black should probably take with the rook and we get positions that uh, happen a lot in the Italian, where we get a better bishop. Bishop f8 is solid, but it is passive too. Bishop c1 is slightly better than bishop f8, and we keep on placing our pawns on light squares. It is, as I was saying, a solid position for black, but it is fair to say white is uh, slightly better. Um, the other reason why I believe uh, white slightly better is because at some point we'll play something like d4. Not now, because there are some uh, uh, pieces, black pieces, attacking on e4, but later on, if we prepare it enough, we'll be able to play d4. And d4 looks uh, powerful. On the other hand, if black plays something like b5, it doesn't look as powerful as our d4. Because black also has to keep an eye on e5, and even if we play a quiet move like knight g3, 
we can see that uh, we're dominating on light squares and again our bishop is slightly better than bishop f8. So um, it is fair to say that black in these lines, if he plays precisely, he's likely to equalize. After all, that's what happens in the Italian. Black is not worse. But it's also true that our position is easier to play as white. So trading on e6, playable, you'll find loads of games where white swaps bishops off on e6. And there's also the move Tivyakov played, which is bishop c2. I also like bishop c2 because we keep as many pieces as possible on board. We are still looking at an equal position if, if black plays precisely. But then again, we've got every single piece on board. We've got attacking possibilities. We, we're likely to play d4 at some point. And with every single piece on board, anything can happen. We're still playing white. So, given the chance, I would take white in this position. If you regret not trading bishops off, you can always play bishop b3 again. That's not the end of the world. And that's, by the way, another concept. Let's say you play something like knight g3 here, and he takes. That's great for us, because we bring a side pawn towards the center. We open up the a-file. So, oops, sorry about the glitch. So, it's not the end of the world if we have to play... Uh, bishop b3 again at some point so it's a matter of taste it's, it all depends on the, the exact position and what you're trying to achieve as white I think we can win with both strategies taking on e6 or playing bishop c2 I believe bishop c2 is sharp because I like keeping a lot of pieces on board and uh, let's see what happened in this game. Black plays c5. Um, I believe um, in this game, Tivyakov uh, being uh, almost 2700, playing a lower rated opponent, which by the way was uh, quite a strong opponent, 2500. But what I'm trying to say is white was definitely playing for a win here, so it makes sense for white to play bishop c2. So c5, here white played knight h4, we can play other moves as well, as we know, here knight h4 is interesting, especially because there is no queen on d8, so black has no tactics based on moves like knight takes e4, there's nothing going, there's nothing going on for black here, so knight bd7, here white played queen f3, preparing knight f5, okay d5, knight f5, and we do get an interesting position, again, with several pieces on board and a lot of tactics to consider. Uh, black played bishop takes f5, which happens to be a slight mistake. Um, but on the other hand, it is fair to say that's not easy to play something else in this position as black, because it's easy to analyze this with an engine, but in practice, when you're playing in real life, in a real life game, it's not easy to play moves like d4. That's what the engine says. But for starters, if black closes up the center, it's easier for white to attack on the king side. You can even play something like c4, so we close up the queen side as well, and then we can start firing. I know the engine probably says that it's not enough for white, but if you look at that position and you see g4, h4, knight g3, g5, all of the threats by white, um, I understand if black panics here, because that's what I would do if I was playing black, to be honest. Um, it is not easy to play a move like d4, and also d4 doesn't create threats because okay black can probably take on c3 but I should stay back and there's not much uh, black has achieved there so d4 not an easy move to play um, if black takes on e4 well here we get a new concept and the concept this concept happens in the king's Indian defense the Italian the real Lopez 
uh, we see a position where black will never land with a knight on d4 because we've got that pawn on c3 and white on the other hand might land on d5 because black has a pawn on c5 so maybe we can try something like this at some point it's uh, an imbalance that favors white so after knight f5 as you can see not easy to deal with that knight there g6 runs into knight takes h6 a lot of weaknesses for black playing something like king h7 is not easy either because with that bishop on c2 no one's gonna like playing king h7 we know at some point in future that bishop on c2 is gonna be uh, it's gonna be creating some tactics we might have a discovered check who knows uh, but black uh, shouldn't be exposed to tactics uh, via bishop c2 so I understand if uh, black played bishop takes f5 here but now after queen takes we see uh, we keep a healthy position as white we do have the bishop pair now if he plays d4 it's a disaster because now bishop b3 there's no way for black to challenge that bishop we might even play something like queen g6 at some point i've seen this trick a million times especially in online games where uh, we just win because f7 pawn is pinned so after queen takes f5 uh, we have stable advantage as white because of the bishop pair we can continue with our development and let's see what happens in the game black 2 queen e4 uh, here we still have uh, the concept we mentioned before d5 is an outpost whereas d4 isn't um, not to mention the attacking possibilities we've got on the king side it's key not to underestimate bishop c2's potential because at the moment it is a passive bishop but in no time that bishop could be doing a lot of damage uh, via b3 a4 even d1 who knows uh, a lot of ideas for white here and even end games are good for us because the bishop pair counts um, and the other reason why black is in trouble here at least from a positional point of view is the fact his bishop is not the best his he doesn't have the bishop pair it is an open position and bishop f8 is not the greatest it is actually black's worst bishop so if you see the whole game you will see that uh, black ended, ended up in trouble because uh, despite trying to close out the queen side playing something like c4 and b5 white found ways to open up that position and at the end the bishop pair decided the game so i believe this is enough for this chapter because we mentioned a lot of ideas um, we actually didn't analyze uh, the main game, the game you'll find in the PGN files, which is Carson against Weiji. But I think uh, it was worth our while to study to study all of the ideas uh, we mentioned and the game played by Tiviakov. So in the next chapter, we'll see the game played by Carson and we'll also analyze uh, the main line, which is uh, plain black playing d5 here. We saw bishop e7. Oops, sorry about that. So we saw bishop e7. We have to see d6 and d5. And before finishing this chapter, please let me remind you that this is not about analyzing this move by move. This is about understanding the ideas. So if we remember the plan, we are good to go. So with that said, I'll finish this chapter. I hope you found this chapter useful. I hope you could learn something. And of course, I want to see you guys in the next one. Thank you.